What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. This one has been requested for quite some time. I have a lot of you guys out there starting YouTube channels, starting streaming and all that stuff and you want to know the best recording setup that you can do with OBS to get your recordings looking nice and crispy like mine here on this channel. So what we're going to do is go over that today. We're going to go over all the settings you need so that you guys can make nice and crisp recordings. But before we do that, a lot of you are streamers and you know how important it is to stand out amongst the crowd in the sea of millions of people trying to be streamers on Twitch, Kick, and YouTube. And if that's you and you want to make your stream pop and look really, really nice, you guys got to check out the sponsor for today's video, Owned.TV. Owned.TV is your one-stop shop for fresh new graphics for your stream. Whether you're on Twitch, YouTube, or Kick, you'll find something that's a perfect fit for your channel. They offer full themed overlay packages, which are great if you're trying to give your stream a complete makeover, but let's say you're looking to pick up some new alert graphics, don't worry, because they've got you covered there too. You could find single graphics such as alerts, emotes, banners, panels, and logos as well. And one of the best parts about these overlays is that they are completely modular. So if you and your friends all pick up the same overlay, such as this Rodan one right here, you could change the colors and tweak it to match your brand and none of you will have the exact same overlay. If you're looking to take your stream to the next level, be sure to check out own.tv using my link below to support the channel. And don't forget, use code HAMMER at checkout for an additional 50% off your order. Now, back to the video. All right, guys, so we're here in OBS and the first thing that I want you guys to do is come down here to the settings in the bottom right. And then we're going to check out these tabs. So if you look here, you have general, appearance, stream, output, audio, video, hotkeys, accessibility, and advanced. We're going to start off in the general tab. And in here, there's not much you need to do except for you can turn on source alignment snapping, which this will allow you to position things within your scene a little bit easier. They can snap to the edges. You could snap them to other objects within the scene. I do suggest putting this on and then changing your sensitivity to whatever you want it to be. From there, we're going to move into the appearance tab. This is not that important. This is just the appearance of how you want your OBS to look. For my theme, I have it set to Yami. You could change the font size, the density, classic, compact, normal, comfortable. This is just how OBS looks to you. So this isn't that important. And then from there, we're going to go into the stream tab. This tab, you can pretty much completely ignore if you're just here to learn how to record stuff. This is where you're going to set up if you're streaming to a platform or anything like that. This is where you would set that up. But this is where the meat and potatoes of this video comes in. You're going to head over to the output tab. Ignore this where it says streaming. Make sure up here it says advanced so you get all the options and then click on the recording tab. Now here is where you're going to set the bulk of your recording settings for OBS. Under recording path, this is where you're going to set the path where you want your recordings to be going after you finish recording and you hit stop recording. So set this accordingly wherever you want that to be. For your recording format, you can record an MP4 but I want you guys to know that if you record an MP4 and you blue screen or something like that, um, you're going to have an issue where the entire file becomes corrupt. So if you're recording longer videos, um, I, I suggest recording an MKV or FLV and then converting it to an MP4 afterwards. I just record an MP4 because these videos are roughly 8 to 10 minutes long, so it's not that big of a deal if I have to redo the video. Uh, for video encoder, this is where you're going to select whatever your GPU is. If you're using an AMD GPU, select your AMD video encoder option. If you're using an NVIDIA GPU, select your NVIDIA encoder option. What this is basically doing is telling your computer to use your graphics card for the encoding instead of your processor. It's hardware encoding versus software encoding. Hardware encoding is a lot better, so make sure you're selecting whatever your graphics card brand is. Uh, go with AMD or NVIDIA for this. For your audio encoder, we have it set to FFmpeg AAC. For your audio track, this is going to be like your main number one track. If you want everything mixed down into one track, this is how you're going to do that. I will have videos on the channel on how to split up different audio tracks if you want to do that, but that's a little bit more advanced. So for the purposes of this video, we're just using audio track one. You want to rescale output, have that disabled because uh, we can do that later on and I'm going to show you in another setting. For your encoder settings, these are where it's really, really important. This is where the quality of your recording comes into play, okay? So for your rate control, you want to set this to constant QP and constant QP level I have set to 16. You could start this up at like 22 and then drop it down if you have enough space on your computer. The lower you put this number, the bigger the file size will be, but the better the quality is. So from 16 to 22, there's not that much of a noticeable difference in quality. So that's why I'm saying start at 22. And if you want it a little bit more crispy, bump it down to 20. Uh, but just keep in mind that lowering this number does 
drastically increase the file size of your recording. For keyframe interval, we have this set to two seconds for preset. We have this set to slowest or best quality. You can set this here. And then if you're having some encoding overload errors or your computer's feeling bogged down, you can drop this down quite a bit. Um, you know, pretty much getting go, going down to like P5, you're still going to have really good quality, but it's going to be a lot less demanding on your PC. But I suggest starting at P7 and then working your way down from there. For tuning, you're going to set this to high quality. For multi-pass mode, I have mine set to two passes and full resolution. But to be completely honest, there's not that big of a difference between this option and using single pass. So if you're struggling, again, if your PC is feeling bogged down, feel free to use single pass here. But I'm using two passes full resolution. For profile, we have this set to high. Look ahead is unchecked. Adaptive quantization is checked. B frames are set to two and no custom encoder options. For your audio tab here on the side, this is going to be where, you know, if you're using a gaming headset, you select your microphone for the gaming headset and then the gaming headset speakers you're going to select for your desktop audio device. Um, I'm using a Go XLR. Everything is mixed down into one thing that is the broadcast stream mix. And that is what I have here. Ignore this music thing that I have here. This is for some pretty advanced audio stuff that I have other videos on the channel that explain this if you want to get into that. But that's mainly for streaming. It has nothing to do with recording. So gaming headset, use your gaming microphone here and your a gaming headset speakers here. Um, if you're using a standalone microphone, select that here and maybe speakers, select that for your desktop audio device. Uh, and, and that's really it for audio settings. We can go down to video settings now. This is another key important part of making sure your recording looks good. So in here, your base canvas resolution, this is gonna be whatever your main screen is. Okay, uh, if, you're, if your main screen is 1080p, that's what your base canvas resolution is going to be. If it's 4K, that's what your base canvas resolution is going to be. If it's 2K, that's what your base canvas resolution is going to be. If you want to record in 1080p, even if you're gaming in 2K or 4K, that would be where you change the output scaled resolution down to 1080p. If you're gaming in 4K and you want to record in 2K, same thing. The output scaled resolution is what your recording will actually come out as. Um, and then if you are downscaling, you'll have the option to select a downscale filter, select Lanxos for this option that will give you the best filter possible. And then you can set your FPS values right here under that. You can be recording in 30 FPS, 24 FPS, 60 FPS if you want. Um, just put that number in here. All this stuff is grayed out for me, guys, just because I am currently recording. It doesn't allow you to change these settings while you're recording. And that's pretty much it. So once you have that all situated, you have your OBS set up and you can make nice crispy recordings. So let me know down in the comments below if there's anything else you guys want to know about OBS. I have a ton of videos on the channel, but I'm kind of going back and like curating my channel right now and updating any videos that are really, really old, like five plus years old. Um, there's a lot of new settings now. There's a lot of new tech out there. So I want to make sure that you guys have the most accurate information so that you can have the best looking recordings, the best looking streams on Twitch, Kick or YouTube you know, and whatever else that you you guys are trying to do. So either way, that's pretty much all it takes to get your recordings looking really, really nice on OBS. It's fairly simple. So if you have any questions or anything, drop them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, if you guys want to follow me, I stream on Kick Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern, kick.com slash hammerdance. I'll pin a comment down below so that you guys can go follow me over there. Um, and that's it. Subscribe to the channel if this is the kind of stuff that you want, all kinds of tech reviews, uh, streaming reviews, tutorials with Meld, OBS, that kind of stuff. Subscribe to the channel. That's, that's what we do on here on this channel. I like to help everyone out. But either way, guys, that's all I've got for you. So thank you all so much for watching and listening in. I want you to keep those hammers up. And I'll see you next time.